In this episode, we ask the question, how does a curator of great cats monitor the health of individual lions in a pride? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm at the National Zoo. The National Zoo is located in Northwest Washington, D.C. and is home to 2,000 animals. Many of them are endangered or threatened. The National Zoo is committed to the research, conservation, and public education of these rare species. One example is the African lion. The pride of lions at the zoo includes six cubs and three adults. The adult females are named Naba and Shira. The male is named Luke. Nine lions is a lot to care for. To get a sense of how the lions are fed and what steps are taken to monitor their health, I need to go where they live. So I've arranged to meet Great Cat's curator, Craig Sappho. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, Jess. Hey, Craig. Awesome. I found you. Yeah, good to see you again. Good to see you. All right. Come on in. OK. We'll take you back. Craig leads me through a long underground we'll corridor see. back to the zoo's lion cages. Back here. I'm excited. Excellent. Going into the lion's den. And so we're safe here? We're safe back here, okay. as long as you follow our safety rules. And our safety rules are really simple. We like to stay over on the left-hand side of our yellow line. Okay. The yellow line painted on the ground is there for safety reasons. My crew and I are given very clear instructions to stay on the left side of it, away from the cages. Come on in. Stay on this side of the line. Only caretakers like Craig are allowed to be on the right side, closer always, to the line. Sure As we make our way back, Craig well, explains one of the easiest Craig, ways zookeepers yeah, monitor like lion the, health is the through their diet, the which starts with raw meat. Um, we've got our meat here, so this okay. is the meat diet that we'll end up feeding to the cats. Can I just um, see that? I'm just curious absolutely. what you feed your cat. Nebraska so, brand all feline diet. diet. This is made for lions? This is made for large carnivores. So okay. it's lions, hyenas, tigers, any number of large carnivores. It's That's got awesome. All the nutrient enrichment that we need to make sure that the cats stay healthy. Today, we're preparing a meal for the lions. Lions are obligate carnivores and eat only animal flesh because their bodies don't make certain amino acids and vitamins they need. But they can get them by eating meat. Believe it or not, it smells like meat. Probably smells like meat to you. It smells just like meat. And then... But nothing, no, fairly mild. And if it smells like meat, you're in great shape. If it starts to smell a little off or rancid and you wouldn't eat it, we don't feed it to the cats. To ensure and maintain their health, each lion requires a specific amount of meat every day. So we weigh each container to make sure we give the precise portion. If you don't get it right the first time, sorry, we gotta fire you. Do you fire me or do you feed me to lions? <laughs> Once each lion's daily portion of meat is weighed, Craig does something to it I wasn't expecting. We put glitter in everybody's I was gonna say, that looks like glitter. Glitter does not get digested by the cats. So it okay. comes out in the poop, and that helps us to identify whose poop is whose. Is this, is this special glitter or just regular store-bought glitter? regular, non-toxic glitter that yeah. you would give to a kid for an art project. That uh -huh. would be okay. Each lion gets his or her own color glitter added to their meat. Luke gets green, Shira gets purple, and Naba gets red. Why, you ask? Well, one of the ways curators can track a lion's health is by analyzing its poop. The problem, though, when you have a pride of lions living in one enclosure is how do you know whose poop is whose? Glitter solves that problem, as it creates a marker unique to each lion. However, Craig explains this problem wasn't solved overnight. It started with some simple research, observations, and trial and error. And then once they had enough information, they began controlling for variables, testing hypotheses, and analyzing their findings. This is hilarious. That's perfect. That's enough? That's enough. Really? As long as that will come out in the poop, that's perfect. Yep. That looks really good. That's the way Luke likes it. <laughs> really? Okay. Have you tried other, like, you know, corn? Yes. Believe it or not, we've gone through the whole gambit of things that yeah. uh, cats are obligate carnivores. So that's yeah. something you have to remember. So they don't digest lentils and grasses and things like that. So we've tried like, rice, beans, uh -huh. split peas. The problem with those is that they get embedded into the poop. So much like we broke up the, the chunks yes. of meat, yeah. we would have to literally sit out there and break up the poop. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And that gets kind of disgusting. Okay. The great thing about the glitter is that it shows up right on the outside of the poop, so we can, even from a distance, identify the poop. Wow. As scientists, Craig and his team have planned and carried out an investigation with an elegant solution to the poop identifying problem. The glitter is non-toxic, inexpensive, easily spotted at a distance, and even colorful. It's kind of like Christmas time. Yeah, it's like Christmas for lions. <laughs> with breakfast finally ready, Craig takes me to meet Luke, who seems a little agitated at the moment, probably because there are strangers in his territory. There is nothing like standing just a few feet away from a massive, growling male lion. You can feel that roar in your spine. 
it's primal and a little off-putting, even for those who love big cats. Luke does not. Well, I don't know if Luke does not like Craig, but Luke and Craig have a little bit of this tension. He's tracking Craig. Yeah. Yeah, he's not my biggest fan. And I've been warned. I've been warned by. Oh, he's going around. I've been warned by Craig that if he turns around and presents his butt to me, that means he's going to spray me with urine and I should just be conscious of it. Josh, in cases like this, if the animal is acting well, yeah. I sometimes will invite people over. You can cross I the can yellow cross line. The line. If I tell you specifically it's okay to cross the line, you're okay. welcome to, so come on across. Okay. You, know, you want to still mind where you are? Yes. But he, if you want He can't get through this. He cannot get through this. Okay. Can I, can I, am I allowed to drop meat in the... Piece. We always gauge the animal's behavior, and with him acting like this, yes, he's okay. Say, I'm, I'm putting it in. There you go. Oh, what if it goes? Uh, kick if it, it comes onto this side, nope. If it comes onto this it. side, we leave it. Okay. And we'll offer him just a little bit more. Can I crouch down to his level? No, no, no. We never no. want to get down onto the cat's level okay. because when you're at the cat's level, you become uh, you become food. The food. So we'll drop the last little bit, and then we'll leave him alone. No, oh, I dropped it on his head. Sorry. You know dude. what? He'll shake that off. Okay. And then we get out of his way and let him enjoy the rest of his breakfast. Throughout the day, Luke and the other lions will continue to be fed their portion of glitter-covered meat, ensuring that each receives adequate nutrition. To answer our original question, how do caretakers monitor the health of individual lions in a pride? The answer is with glitter. But feeding the lions is only the first part of the process, and since what goes in must ultimately come out, in the next episode, Craig and I head into the lion enclosure to go hunting for lion poop.